The red-tailed hawk of North America is at home right across that huge continent. It soars from coast to coast, from the Arizona desert in the south to the cities of the far north. It's a highly adaptable species, at home in a giant cactus or on a man-made artificial tree like these electricity pylons, where it's well protected by the power around it. In the past, red-tailed hawks were hunted wherever they occurred, but today they're protected by law and the main threat comes from the demands made by human beings on their living space. But they're tolerant and adaptable, and in some places in the United States, there are as many as one pair per square mile. They particularly relish a mixed, varied landscape like this one, where there are woodlands, fields of maize, marshes, ponds, and roadside verges, all capable of harboring food for a hungry hawk. Here, starting one early spring, we will follow the fortunes of one bird, as yet unhatched. His parents must sense that the big day is due and keep in touch continuously. This is the story of Redtail, just one of many red-tailed hawk chicks hatching this week across North America. The nest is in a patch of woodland near a farm and a riding school. In this territory, Redtail will grow up and get to know intimately the sights and sounds around him. His parents, who mate for life, display to one another overhead with hanging talons, strengthening the bond between them. They're also surveying their territory and are always on the lookout for food, scanning the farmland below with eyesight that is five times better than ours. Young Redtail has a permanent appetite. His potential brother or sister is not to be. The other egg failed to hatch and the parents have already removed it. So all their attention will be devoted to Redtail. The next tree neighbor, a red-winged blackbird, keeps a careful eye on the domestic life of the hawks.
Red-tailed hawks catch a wide variety of prey, including rats and mice, which are a pest on the farm. They also take birds, which explains why the local red-winged blackbirds and grackles give the parents a bad time, mobbing them as they commute to and from the nest. By this time of year, May, the nest tree, an oak, is bursting into leaf, and insects and warblers thrive in the greenery. Redtail grows fast too, and food has to be supplied in larger and larger quantities. This is a grackle, perhaps one of the mob that pursues his parents. He spends much of his time scrutinizing things around him, such as the red-winged blackbird or a passing warbler. His world of sight and sound gradually expands as his senses develop. Hawks must be very alert to everything going on around them if they are to survive, and Redtail studies the activities at the riding stables below. Fresh greenery is brought in to decorate the home. The other parent is out, hunting over the territory it knows so intimately. Young Redtail, small though he is, will swallow the snake whole. The farmers, probably unknowingly, benefit quite a lot from this hawk family. The birds will breed wherever there's a good supply of rats and mice. The more such pests there are, the more chicks they will raise. They will also take other things as well, including small birds such as red-winged blackbirds, cardinals, and American robins. Sometimes they will even tackle bigger birds. A young pheasant. Riding continues as usual, but up in the treetops there are new developments. Redtail is exercising his wings. He leaves the nest on short test flights in preparation for the great takeoff.
and he's away. Now for the next problem, the mob. The blackbirds are very agitated by all this and attack both Redtail and his parents with great vigor. A kingbird is particularly aggressive and persistent. Autumn. The fall. Nuts and acorns from the oak tree will provide a winter store for the squirrel stowed away under the dying leaves. The green fades from the maples and the day is shortened. Redtail is getting restless. Soon he must head south to a different country, traveling without the company of his parents, guided by an inborn sense. The blackbirds are assembling to start making a similar journey. So are the geese. The autumn migration is now at its peak. Redtail waits no longer. To the south, away from the approaching snow. His journey to an unknown destination takes him over new sights and sounds. The world of his parents, horse riding, the farm, and the local bird life is replaced by vistas of the varied lands of North America. And very strange it must seem. And then, as he crosses the Appalachian Mountains at one particular place, another surprise. A great crowd of people, all gazing up into the sky. This is the famous Hawk Mountain, focal point for thousands of migrating hawks and vultures every fall. It's not far by air from the great cities of New York and Washington, and it attracts bird watchers from hundreds of miles around. This great outcrop of rock confronts the birds as they fly south and concentrates them into some of the biggest flocks to be seen anywhere in the United States. Red-tailed hawks reach their peak in October and Redtail is here just a number in a notebook amongst many other statistics. Each of the other individual birds has its own story to tell of life so far, but over Hawk Mountain to the bird watcher, there's simply more dots in the sky. Hawks used to be trapped and shot here in great numbers, but now Hawk Mountain is a sanctuary. But will Redtail be safe as he reaches the subtropics of Florida, where he finds one of the biggest surprises of all, the sea?
It's the Caribbean. A different temperature, a different terrain, and all that water. It's a good place for a winter holiday, but like most first-time visitors, Redtail, to start with, has to find his way around. It's all so different. He surveys his new home from the air. and from various vantage points. A frigate bird. Not many of those back on the farm. All the movement and sounds of the sea must be fascinating, but is there anything to eat down there? And it's so hot. His first pelican. They get their food from the sea quite successfully, but then they're professional fishermen. Is that edible? A crab? It's all a question of technique. But eventually, he catches a lizard. His first meal for several days. Life here isn't so bad after all, and he doesn't know what he's missing, yet. Back home, things have changed. After five months, the migratory urge brings him back home to the woods where he was born, though it's hardly recognizable on this snowy day in April. It's quite a shock to the system. There are a few familiar faces about. The squirrel has survived the winter here thanks to its store of acorns. The cold makes it very urgent to find food. To keep warm, these American robins must refuel all the time. Redtail 
watches and waits. Birds of prey spend many hours doing only this. If they do catch a decent meal of meat, its food value is high and they can afford to sit about again for quite a while. A mouse is not much, but it will keep him going until tomorrow, and maybe then spring will start to arrive. In the meantime, there's this strange stuff to contend with. Or is he looking for another mouse? At last, warmth. As the snow retreats to the north, the Canada geese return. And the mallard respond, too, to the coming of spring. Redtail's life is getting easier again. This certainly looks like a good meal. As the Canada geese fly on to the far north to breed, Redtail is trying to get his bearings on where he was born. The nest in the wood by the riding stables is still there, and his parents display overhead as they prepare to raise another family. But he's now in competition with them in their territory, and he will have to move on. It's been a year of surprises, different for every young red-tailed hawk across North America. But they now have one thing in common, the first sign of maturity, the beginnings of a red tail. Thank you.